Okay, so welcome to another video. Uh, this one is about calculating the strength of welds, so specifically a fillet weld under shear force in this example. So we have a look at the question. We've got to calculate the minimum required length of a quarter inch fillet weld on a T-joint, which needs to withstand a shear force of 100 kilonewtons. And we have some more information, so we know the tensile strength of the weld is 200 megapascals. Okay, so before we start and do any calculations, let's let's draw this out so we can understand what we're talking about. So if you imagine, what we're saying is we've got a base plate here of material, um, and then there is a, a beam on top of it. Doesn't matter about the shape too much, but you can get the idea. Um, and then that beam is held on by two fillet welds either side. And if you can imagine that top beam is under some sort of force, which is pulling it but it's pulling it out of the out of the video. So if we if we draw that from the top instead, so we get a better angle. What we're saying is we have a base plate of material here. Okay, and then there is a beam on top, uh, like here, like this. Oops. Let's do that again. There is a beam on top of the material like this. Okay, and that beam is held in place by the fillet weld, which comes off either side like this, and it's been subjected to a force. So you notice the force here, and you notice that the force is coming off the plate at the bottom, it's pulling the beam on the top. So that means the weld either side is under a, under a shear force. Okay, uh, and that is with uh, a value F. Okay, so based on the information that we've given in the question, we know that the tensile strength of the weld material is 200 megapascals. So we can write that like this. So sigma W equals 200 megapascals. But we're looking at a, a case here which is under shear. So as per the workbook, what we say is the maximum allowable shear strength or shear force so we'll put that as, as tau A for the max allowable. Uh, and we take that to be 30%. So 0 0.3 of the uh, tensile strength of the material. So 0 0.3 times by 200 megapascals is 60. And that's in megapascals. So let's put that into standard units. So 60, and that's times 10 to the 6 pascals. Okay, but what we're interested in is the length of what the weld can be. So if we look at our calculation for for shear strength, so strength yeah, right, equals uh, the force applied over the area. Okay, and we have two of those figures now. So if we rearrange to understand what the area of the weld can be, so the area equals the force divided by the maximum allowable shear strength. And we now have some of these figures, so we know that the force equals 100 kilonewtons. So we'll write that as 100 times 10 to the 3 for the kilo. Uh, and that's divided by the maximum allowable shear, which we said was 60 times 10 to the 6. And if you put that in your calculator, what you get is that area equals 1.667 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. Okay, but we're not interested in what the area is. What we want to know is what length of weld that's, that, that translates into. So if we go into a new page, so the length of the weld that we're interested in, to calculate that, we take the area, and we know the area equals length times by and what we call the throat thickness of the weld. So what we're saying is if we go back onto our diagram here, if we if we look at this here in, in, in a bit more detail, I'll draw it larger here. So what we're saying is that's the beam, that's the base material, and you've got your weld here. The throat thickness of the weld is this length here. Okay, and we'll label that as T. And we know it's a quarter inch weld, so that means this length here, which we'll label W, is the same as this length here, so that's W. 
and we know that w is a quarter inch but again we want to put that into si units so that equals 0 0.25 times by 25.4 that's how many millimeters uh, are in an inch and um, because millimeters that's times 10 to the minus 3. so that means that w equals if you put that in your calculator you get w equals 6.35 millimeters 6.35 times 10 to the minus 3 meters um, but what we're interested in is this throat thickness t so if you were to do a little bit of uh, a trigonometry we know that this angle here is 45 degrees and so using trigonometry we would know that cos 45 equals t so equals the adjacent divided by the height Potenuse, which in this case is the long side is W and if we rearrange that what we get is T equals cos 45 times by W uh, and as we put in the workbook cos 45 you can estimate at 0 0.707 times that by W which is 6.35 millimeters and that means T you get a figure of 4.5 49 millimeters uh, which in other words is 4.49 times 10 to the minus 3 meters okay uh, so now if we go back to our equation at the top here and substitute t back in we now know what a is we know what t is uh, what we're interested in is the length so let's rearrange uh, and we know that length equals the area divided by the throat thickness the area we worked out on the other side is 1.667 times 10 to the minus 3 just to remind you that was this figure here okay and that's all divided by the throat thickness which we've just worked out is 4.49 times 10 to the minus 3 so they cancel each other out, and if you put that into your calculator, what you will get is that the total length of weld needed is 0 0.37 meters. But there's one more thing to remember. If we go back to our initial diagram, we have the weld on both sides. So the last thing to remember to do is divide that by 2. 0.37 divided by 2. And what that actually means is you have. 0.185 meters or if you want to make it look a bit neater 18.5 centimeters of weld needed on either side of the beam okay i hope you found that useful thank you